In this lesson, we'll examine Max's F-curve tangent types. These tangent types control how our animation will interpolate. So let's go and understand what each setting will do, how it will affect our animation. I'll go ahead and select the ship, right-click, and access the curve editor. And before we even get into our different tangent settings, I'd like to quickly bring your attention to our navigation tools at the bottom right of the track view. First we have the pan. Next we have the zoom extends where we can quickly zoom into our selected function curve and keys. Holding down these flyouts we can see we get to other buttons that are for zooming into our values. Next we have the normal zoom tool which is basically holding down alt control and middle mouse button dragging. It's the same thing and if you notice as we zoom it zooms based off of the position of our cursor. And then we have the select zoom tool or the zoom region tool. Alright, so I'll right click to come out of that. Once again, zoom into our function curves. And also those same tools can be found under the view menu. Alright, but getting right into our tension types, what we first have is auto. Auto is a great way to avoid any overshoots in our animations. So for example, I'll go ahead and select this key here on frame 40. Now what we see first off is a black line. This represents our tangent handle. This is what we'd use to really fine-tune and finalize our animations. So notice I'm going to go ahead and quickly add an overshoot by dragging down this tangent handle. But you'll see that once we apply auto it's going to take care of that overshoot for us. So that's very nice. And if it was a key in between a valley and a hill key, what would happen is that the tangency would conform to the F-curve. So it's a great way to quickly have nice smooth interpolation. You'd see that also the tangent handle turns light purple, meaning that we can turn this tangent into a custom tangent, making it available for editing. And that's actually what our next setting does. So go ahead and, if we go ahead and choose that, you'll see that the tangent handle turns black. And again, that means that we can adjust it however we like in orientation and length. Next we have set tangent to fast. So we can go ahead and see what that does, selecting all of our keys. It's basically going to speed up the animation as it enters into our keyframe and as it leaves the key. This wouldn't be the best circumstance to use that setting for. Instead, we'd probably want to use that to show weight in an object that's falling, primarily in a bouncing ball animation or something like that. And you'll notice that we don't have access to our tangent handles by using set to fast, nor any of the other options that we're about to experiment with. But what we can do is very easily go back to custom tangency by selecting the key. You'll see that now our tangent handles are made available and it still keeps the shape of the F-curve. What we have next is set tangent to slow. So if we were to select all of our keys and choose set to slow, you'll see that that's going to smooth out our interpolation. So here's what the animation looks like by choosing set to slow. This would be great for quickly adding ease outs and ease ins to our animations. And again, going back to our track view, we can set this to custom and then adjust the tangency further. What we have next is stepped. And this is for blocking out our animations. So what's going to happen is that our value will hold constant until it reaches the next value. And here's how that will look. So you may be wondering, why would anyone use this? Well, this is actually great for the pose-to-pose method of animation where we would first block out our actions and get them roughly where we'd like them to be in timing. And then we can go back and use something like auto to smooth out our interpolation and finalize. 
So this would be the first step, especially for working on more complex animations. Following this, we have linear. And we already get an idea of what that's going to do. It's just going to give us linear interpolation, no major change at all from key to key. So if we were to hit play, here's what that looks like. Great for robotic animations or even for eye moves. All right, and following this, we have set to smooth, which works similar to set to slow. It's just going to smooth out our interpolation. So again when we hit play we'll see what we've basically saw when we applied set to slow. So those are our different tangent types and we saw how each affect our animation. And all of those settings are the same as our default in and out tangent types at our animation panel. So I would recommend either starting with auto or if you're working with more complex animations you can start with stepped and block out your animations just to get your poses where you'd roughly like them to be and your timing as well.